The electrification of transportation systems around the world started a long while ago underground, of course, here in the UK. We saw the tube system get underway in the early part of the 20th century, but since then we've seen electric boats, ships. How about electric planes? We're already going through the process of electrifying cars. John Mayer joins us now uh, with some more analysis on this. You've just released a, an interesting paper called Electrifying Flight, uh, which covers um, the new way in which we can propel ourselves through the air. As I said, electrification of transportation systems did start a long while ago. So we know the complications involved about this. Let's talk about the, the metals, the mining. You're a, a partner at SP Angel, and, and you deal with the mining sector. Uh, let's talk about how this is going to change things for miners around the world? Well we've all been talking about electric vehicles and, and as you mentioned electric boats, ships, I mean it, the, the transportation sector has been revolutionized with electric motors. Now this is developing into electric flight so drone taxis but also uh, adding electric uh, propulsion to commercial aircraft and that we're, we're going to see this come in in a series of steps that the generation of electricity on board and the, the propulsion of these, these aircraft and, and flying vehicles, sometimes uh, pilotless drones for example, uh, is going to revolutionise the transportation sector yet further. And, and it's not just one company looking at doing this, there's a whole myriad of companies. EasyJet has, a, has a, an electric aircraft uh, unit that it's developing. Uh, uh, in, in that, uh, but NASA is working on this, and then a whole series of these these Silicon Valley billionaires are developing their own systems. So Uber is looking at, uh, oh, is trialing uh, unmanned, un unpiloted drone taxis in Dubai at the moment. We've got companies in Germany, New Zealand, the States, all developing their own, sometimes manned, sometimes um, sometimes unpiloted drone taxi systems, and, and they're very interesting. This is very interesting when you take vehicles away from the source of the of the power. I'm thinking about the the rail system. It's easy to draw uh, electricity out of a middle rail, uh, and you've got of course the boats, uh, which were driven initially by uh, uh, the diesel engines powering uh, the electrification of the of the drive chain but when you actually take a vehicle away such as we've had cars you then come across this problem about how to go around with your your electric uh, electricity on your back if you like the battery systems are they really up to taking us through the air well lithium batteries are light from a lithium perspective but it's the other metals in the batteries that get heavy it's the nickel uh, and the cobalt, not, not as light as lithium, unfortunately. So there is, there is reason to have lithium batteries on these, these flying vehicles, but in reality you're going to want to generate more electricity on board. Uh, but the great thing about using electric motors is you make the flight uh, more energy efficient and, and that makes your propulsion better. And, and f specifically for drone type vehicles, so we're talking about small uh, air taxis that can carry one, two people around town short distances, um, you will, will use, use, use high, high density batteries for that uh, and probably a little bit of onboard uh, electrical generation as well. The, the, the big commercial planes, they'll start with propellers on the back to streamline uh, or cr create better aer aerodynamics over the fuselage. That reduces the requirement for fuel and makes everything much more efficient. So it will come in, in in incremental stages in our view, uh, and I, but I think there will be a lot of it when it comes. So what about the, the battery metals that are involved here? What is it that we need more of that we're not got enough of at the moment to give us the opportunity, as I say, to take around the power on our back? Key materials here are lithium, of course, uh, for, for the batteries to get things started. When an aircraft takes off, it needs a lot of power very early on. And then when it's up in the air, it doesn't actually need that much to keep it going. Um, to go with those with the, for those lithium batteries, nickel and graphite and cobalt, because cobalt is used to stabilise the battery so it doesn't catch fire. Really rather important wherever you are, whatever you're doing, but particularly when you're in the air. <laughs> um, and titanium, because titanium metal is fabulous for aircraft parts. It's very strong, but it's very very light and, and not too difficult to machine, which is, which is critical. So there's a whole range of materials that are going to be important here. I think graphite and graphene are really going to come into their own here. Carbon fibre uh, for, for shells, uh, probably more aluminium as well. That, you know, anything that will reduce weight and enable uh, flight I think will be important. What about rare earths? We still talk about rare earths in the context of them being rare, but in fact they're not rare, are they? They're just not mined in many places because they're worried about the 
environmental impact of doing so? Well, they're not rare, but they are hard to find in decent concentrations. So there really aren't that many companies with good quality rare earth projects. So we, we're focused on Makango in, in Malawi, for example. Good quality project. Hopefully, will the, the rare earth concentrate that they'll produce will be refined in the UK and Teesside, which is one of the proposals. So we, th we see a good future for that. And the reason why it's so important is you want to have the most efficient motor possible when you're in the air. It needs to be light and efficient. And neodymium is, the, is one of the key metals for that. It, it will reduce the, the, the weight of that um, and, and the, the, the capacity of, of that engine hugely. So companies like Tesla might be able to say, we don't need rare earths in our, in our permanent magnets. We don't need permanent magnets. But when you're flying a taxi in the air, it becomes really important. Yeah. What about um, the other ones you mentioned, uh, copper? Cobalt. What are we looking for there in terms of opportunities within the market? Well, copper is required for all the windings. It's not just the control systems and getting the electricity from the battery or, or the generator to, to the motor. Clearly, very important part of the chain. Uh, but for the windings on the motor, that's where there's a huge amount of copper used for that. So it won't be large tonnages for, for, for small aircraft, but it is big numbers for, for ships and other types of devices. And companies involved? Companies, uh, well, we're looking at growth companies going forwards, and it's, it's quite difficult to find new copper mines. So for us, Georgian Mining has a fabulous project in, in, in Georgia, of all places, uh, Anglo-Asian in Azerbaijan, we're talking, uh, Phoenix Global in the United States, in Idaho, Sol Gold has one of the world's top ten undiscovered, un undeveloped uh, copper projects in Ecuador. Very important companies going forwards for, for the future of, of copper production. How about lithium? Lithium, uh, well, there's quite a lot of lithium companies around right now, but there's going to be a lot of demand for it. So we do see a good future for lithium companies. Kodal Minerals is something we're close to. Uh, Savannah Resources uh, in, in Portugal, quite a nice project there. Kodal is, is in... Uh, um, in Mali, a uh, good place for mining actually, so, so th th but there's a whole lot of other companies in Australia, uh, there's a few in Chile, one or two in Argentina, so there's quite a lot of choice I think. Yeah, I'm interested actually in, in your notes in this electrifying flight um, note that you've, you've issued, uh, you talk about the regulations as well, and I've, I mean, we talk here easily about how you put a battery together and how you use it and how you apply it and so forth, but we haven't even got in the air yet. When you see all these people droning around uh, locally, it's going to be an absolute nightmare, isn't it, regulatory-wise? Uh, well, certain regulators are going to, to want to have more control than others. The city of du Dubai seems to be very proactive and they're allowing trials to go on. And depending on how successful those trials are, I think other cities are going to want to adopt this. So I, I can imagine that the city of London will say, yes, let's have a few of these and try them. They're not going to want to be embarrassed and left behind on the technology because you're, you know, if you're a guy that wants to get from A to B quickly let's, across London, you, you, you're fed up of sitting in, in an ordinary taxi, stuck in the traffic, going around the road works, etc. You're going to want to get around pretty quick. So the regulators are going to have to catch up with this. Mm. Affordability is another thing, of course, you've got to consider. This sounds like an extremely expensive both, uh, method of transport. Like everything, it will have a cost to start with, but I, I can see those costs coming down really fast because these are, are going to be relatively simple vehicles. Yeah, and the companies involved, um, the big companies involved, uh, we know a lot about what's happening with Boeing and, and Airbus. Uh, GKN, of course, recently has gone to Melrose. That's a big aircraft parts. What about these big companies' involvement? Are they keen on doing this? Well, the great thing about this sector is there are big companies going at it, but they are getting, they're likely to be embarrassed by a whole bunch of smaller companies uh, you know, springing up all over the world because they're all saying, oh, well, let's, here's a small, small drone, let's just scale this up and make it a bit better, and some of these guys have got better motors or better batteries, and we can see the power density in the batteries going up exponentially. I think in 10 years' time, the power density on your average lithium battery will be five to ten times what we have in the cars today. So that, that will make a, a huge difference to what you can do uh, in the air and on the ground and, and everything will just become that much more efficient. Now it will create its own problem in that you're, the, the world is going to have to generate more electricity to feed these, these particular engines. So uh, how, will, how, will that be, how will that be generated and how, more to the point, how will that be stored? So we're looking at storage solutions are lithium and vanadium, storage genera uh, electrical generation is solar, wind and traditional generation of coal and probably some diesel coming in again 
Uh, you can't you can't get away with, from it because gasoline and diesel are still very good for for power generation one way or another. Mm. Um, but it's it, but the point is it will be clean. Uh, power generation uh, it, uh, in the cities and that's really critical. Yeah, on the cusp of a new way of getting around. John, thanks indeed uh, for joining us. John Mayer is a partner and mining analyst at SP Angel. Subscribe to IG for educational content, company insight, financial analysis and expert commentary.